بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل لا ومن يضلل فلا هادي لا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Continuing with the tafsir of Surah Al-Hujurat, the Surah of the chapters, of the chambers, I'm sorry. And we chose this particular Surah or this particular chapter because we said any good and model Muslim society or community or family should be built upon the instructions and the guidance in this Surah, in this chapter of the Quran. Because in it are many etiquettes that a society and a community that is supposed to be successful should be built upon. And yesterday, or last week rather, two weeks ago, sorry, we covered one of the most important etiquettes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or principle Allah ta'ala mentioned in this surah. And that etiquette and that principle is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he calls us in the name of iman, in the name of faith. And as we mentioned previously, any time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, or you believe, you should pay close attention. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us with an order. Gave us a command, which is If a fasiq comes to you with news, verify the authenticity of that news. So any fasiq that brings you news, the default is, is it to reject it? No. Is it to accept it? No. But rather to verify whatever he is bringing to you. And we defined what a fasiq is. So any time a fasiq comes with news, you should have to verify it. But in order for you to know whether to verify or not, you have to know what is a fasiq or who is a fasiq. And according to the definition of the scholars, which we mentioned last week, what is a fasiq? Because many times we heard this word fasiq, fasiq, fasiq. And we mentioned it last week. What is a who is a fasiq? Who is considered to be a fasiq? Generally, a fasiq is man in harafa an dinihi wal muru'a. A fasiq is a person that has strayed from aspects of his religion, either leaves off an obligation, like somebody that doesn't pray, for example. Yes? Or somebody that engages in major sin, like you mentioned now, lying. This is a fasiq. Or somebody that goes away or strays from normal, accepted social and cultural norms. There's something in the Arabs have called al muru'a, cultural and social norms. So some of the ulama, the scholars of hadith, any person that was found that used to walk in the streets and eat while he's walking, they'll never take a hadith from him. It's against social norms and against what is culturally respected and accepted. So al muru'a is part of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, social norms. So there's certain types of ways of dressing that according to the social norms, you could say this person is what is a fasiq. There are certain hairstyles that if you have, that you could say this person is a fasiq. There's certain speech or ways of speaking that a couple considered to be what? To be a fasiq by the way he speaks, the way he dresses, the way he even walks. So there's certain types of walk, people walk like this, and he says, brother, taqillah. And he says to you, taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here. Taqwa is in the heart. It doesn't matter how I walk. It doesn't matter how I speak. It doesn't matter how I dress. A taqwa ha huna. How do you refute this? We said last week, we said that we say to them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a taqwa ha huna. And we said last week, the person that says this statement, we say to them, Lo fi, or lo kana taqwa fi taqwa ha huna. Lo kana fi taqwa ha huna. If taqwa is really here, la kana fi ha huna taqwa. In your limbs, we'll see the taqwa. If your heart has got taqwa, we'll see it in your limbs. So there's certain ways of speaking that a person could be considered to be a fasiq. And I, when I say there's certain ways of speaking, I don't mean someone that speaks quote-unquote black is a fasiq 
Because there are people today that say, speak black. I don't know what it means to speak black. What do you mean speak black? No. Speak Pakistani, speak Sri Lankan, that makes your first thing black. Because there's certain ways of speaking, whether it's Jamaican dialect, Nigerian dialect, these are dialects. It doesn't make you a fasik. But there are certain ways of speaking that makes a person a fasik. So the statement or the claim, never judge a book by its cover. Do we accept it or do we reject it? We reject it. Because we do judge a book by its cover. Only Allah knows what's in people's hearts. But the Prophet ﷺ said, when you see a person, Constantly visit the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What should you do? Fashhad lahu bil iman. Bear witness he has iman. So we judge a book by his cover. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thalatha. The signs of a hypocrite are three. Ida wa'ada akhlafa. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. Ida kathaba. Ida hadatha kathaba. When he speaks, he lies. And what else? And when something is placed in his, tr his trust, what does he do? Khan. He becomes treacherous. So somebody lies, he's treacherous, right? He breaks his promise and he said, Akhi, don't judge me, you know, don't judge a book by his cover. La, we judge a book by his cover. Only Allah knows what's in people's hearts. Only Allah knows what's in people's hearts. So Allah Ta'ala says, Inja'akum fasiqun. So if you see somebody walk in a certain walk, dress in a certain way, against the deen or against social norms, automatically you do not believe what he says, nor do you reject it, but what do you do? You confirm or verify the news. And what is the opposite of a fasiq? Adil, somebody that's upright. If he brings news to you, do we accept it or do we reject it? We accept it so long as it's not accusing somebody else. For example, someone of zina. He needs to bring how many witnesses? Four witnesses. Even if he's adil, is an upright person. Istaqama ala deeni wal muru'ah. If you accuse someone of theft, likewise. Even if he's an upright individual, he has to bring what? Witnesses. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'in fatabayyanu. This is what we covered last week. This week we're going to look at the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next part of the ayah, the second part of the ayah, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it known to us the wisdom and the reason behind verifying the news that comes to us from a fasiq. And what is wisdom? And to see who? Qawman bi jahala. Because if you do not verify the news of a fasiq, what are you going to do? You're going to harm people in ignorance, not based on knowledge. Be jahala. And how many people have been harmed in ignorance? I'm talking emotionally, psychologically, financially, reputationally. Especially in the time we're living in now, the, the, the age of social media. That someone just has to stick your picture up on the social media, spread it on WhatsApp, and nowadays people don't verify anything. That this person is, for example, a thief, is a pedophile, immediately spreads that wildfire. People's reputation have been destroyed because people don't verify things. Even when the one that's bringing it is not just a fasiq, is not non-Muslim, people just take it immediately. And although some of these people, they've been resolved from blame, their innocence has been proven, but the amount of scars it leaves on that person. And the stigma attached to that person, because even if you prove innocent, it always be said, it was said about him. How many people have been physically harmed due to what? The news of a fasiq. In places where people believe in this kind of vigilante laws, whereby they just do things without police or anything. How many people have been harmed? In Nigeria, where I come from, all it takes is somebody, ole, 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 thief, thief, thief. Before you know it, this person, has got a tire around his neck. Before you know it, somebody else has bought the petrol. Before you know it, all you could smell is the smell of skin and tire. They burn him to death. And some people have been innocent. And to see and bi jahala, how many people have been murdered? If you Google and you look at something called WhatsApp murders, have you heard of WhatsApp murders? In India alone, from this month of May, we're now in October. Between May and now, October, how many people have been killed in India due to social media? 27 people. 18 of them just through WhatsApp. People put their pictures up, they say these are child snatchers, they beat them to death. The videos are horrific, and these people are innocent people. But by the time you do it, and to see the bi jahala for tusbih ala ma fa'altum nadimin. So that you do not harm a people in ignorance, and then after you harm the people, you become regretful of what you've done.
Because when it's done now, you're regretful, but it's too late. So you do not do this. So we suppose, therefore, to verify the news of a first, especially in the time we live in now, the time of social media. The time of social media. Because some people, they get a buzz of likes. They got a buzz of their tweets being retweeted. And most of these people are namam. They're people that spread false tales and cause corruption between two people. Tell bearers. And that's why there's a strong warning against the namam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا يدخل الجنة القطات. The one that spread tales between people to cause them to be arguing or have problems with each other will never enter Jannah. And once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by a grave, and he saw, he looked at two graves, and he said, إِنَّهُمَا يُعَذَّبَانَ These two people in the grave, they're being punished severely. And they're not being punished for that which they thought was great, but that which they thought was small. One of them, لا يستتر من البول or يستبرع من البول When he went to the toilet to relieve himself, he didn't protect himself from his urine. Meaning the urine splashes, the hair, there, everyone is close. He didn't care. And he's been punished in his grave for that. The other one, كان يمشي بين الناس بالنميمة The other one was Namima. You know those people that do these tweets, WhatsApp message, to cause problems between two people. And we shouldn't believe the news of the Namam. And one of the worst types of news that comes, we never ever verify is that which is attributed to who? That which is attributed to who? The scholars. Many a times, things attributed to scholars and people do not verify these things at all. They say, Sheikh such and such said this. Sheikh such and such gave a fatwa. The first thing you should do is to confirm. Did he, the first step, did the Sheikh give this fatwa? And what's the second step? If he said, yes, I gave the fatwa, what should you do? What's the second step in this? The second step should be, is this really a mistake? Because what to us may be a mistake due to our limited knowledge, in reality may not be a what? May not be a mistake. Thirdly, you should find out in what context was he asked this question. Because people have desires. Some people, they go to the sheikh, they ask about Muhammad al-Sharif, for example. They will not mention his name. They say, sheikh, we have a brother, you know, in our town, in our country, he does A, B, C, D. Or we have a brother. It, they, would mention, they would ask for a general question. They ask a general question. And then when they go back, they said, we ask about such and such. And they'll mention his name now, Muhammad Sharif. And the sheikh said, A, B, C, D, about Muhammad Sharif. And you think, subhanAllah, what oppression is this from the sheikh? He doesn't even know Muhammad Sharif. But they ask a general question. And then later on, they work at what specific. One day I was in the haram. Sheikh Fawzan, Hafizullah, was there. And they asked him a question, a general question. There's a person that says A, B, C, D. Sheikh Fosan said, whoever said this is such and such and such. And he refuted that person. The next, the brothers, they spread this all over the internet. And they specified to the person's name now. Not general. The next day, the same set of brothers went to the haram. And they asked Sheikh Fosan the same question. But now they put a name to it. When they put the name to it, the Sheikh took back everything we said. But did they spread this on social media? Never. So you have to understand in what context did the sheikh he was asked this question. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to see you qawman bi jahala. So you do not harm a people in ignorance for tusbih ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. That you become regretful of what you have done. And sabab al-nuzul hadil ayah. The reason this ayah was sent down was the sahab radiallahu anhum. Something was said to them concerning a set of people. And they wanted to harm those people based on what was alleged those people had done. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was revealed to him, إِنْ جَاءَكُمْ فَاسِقٌ بِنَبَعٍ فَتَبَيَّنُوا If a fasiq comes to you with news, affirm and confirm and verify the validity of that news. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prohibited them from doing so. So what follows after that? أَنْ تُصِيبُ قَوْمًا بِجَهَالَ فَتُصْبِهُ عَلَى مَا فَعَلْتُمْ نَادِمِينَ What's the next ayah after that? وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ فِيكُمْ Rasulullah. So Allah Ta'ala told the Sahaba after this, No, amongst you is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lo yuti'ukum fi kathirin min al-amri la'anittum. If he had obeyed you in many issues, including going to harm those people, it will of course for you what? Much difficulty. Much difficulty. But this saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, al-ibra bi'umum al-lawd. The example or the lesson we should take from this is the general statement. That amongst us is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meaning the Sunnah. 
if we obey the Sahaba in many issues, it will cause many difficulties for them. Not only in verification and using everything. For example, some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, or many of them, they were very eager to enter Jannah. They loved Jannah. So they wanted to know what the Prophet did in his home when he's not with the people. So they realized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to pray at night and he would sleep. He fast, he breaks his fast, he married women, but they say, you know what, his sins, past and future have been forgiven. We could never match him. So therefore, one of them said, as for me, I'm going to pray the night prayer without sleeping at all. Me, I'm going to fast without breaking my fast. And for me, I'm not going to marry women. If the Prophet ﷺ had obeyed them in that, what would have happened to them? It would have caused them difficulty. The Prophet ﷺ said, I pray and I sleep. I fast, I break my fast, and I marry women. Whoever abstains from my sunnah is not from me. So many things that I want to do that the Prophet ﷺ was against, if he had obeyed us in it, it would have caused for us much, much difficulty. And a brother asked a question, because this is a relation, this surah, in how we build a community and society, that it has to be upon Quran and Sunnah. And Allah Ta'ala's orders, أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the who? The Rasul. Does it stop there? وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And those in authority amongst you. Those in authority amongst you could be those, because we're talking about building a community, the leader of your community, the imam of your community, your manager at work, for example. If many a times, let's look at ourselves now as adults, if our parents, of course they don't have the rights of the Prophet ﷺ, they don't have knowledge of the unseen, but one thing the parents do have is what? Experience. Wallahi, if my parents had obeyed me in many of the things I wanted to do, I would have found much difficulties in my life. Sometimes your boss is at work. You cannot understand why he makes this decision. But you must be trusting of your Muslim. If he's a Muslim and he's an upright person, you must be trusting. Because he is seeing things from here and you're seeing things from where? From here. Are they the same? Perspective, perception? No. Sometimes a husband says to the wife and gives a clear instruction. And she says, no, no, no. And some men, they, what they call, uh, Sheikh Saeed could translate this for us. They call it HB. In Swahili, HB. They use the letter HB. They call Hawala Bibi. A lot of the words from Swahili is from Arabic. So Hawala Bibi is like the Arabs, hey wallah, indeed by Allah, hey wallah, hey wallah. Bibi is wife. So there's some men, anything his wife, hey wallah Bibi. Indeed, oh, wallah, my wife. Hey wallah Bibi. He's a yes man to his wife. Hey wallah Bibi. They call him HB. So there's some men, they're what we call hey wallah Bibi. Anything, oh Allah, baby, oh Allah, baby. And when he obeys her in everything which she wants, even though he sees from here, who does the difficulty come to? The husband and the wife. And who else? And the children. Many homes have been destroyed because the husband, he knows. Well, I can, he lets his, and some homes, even though the wife could not see the wisdom of what the husband is saying, and the children. Later on, they come to see it, that if he had obeyed them in those issues, they would have found much difficulty. So for us as a society, those who are above you in leadership, your parents, learn and take from this eye. If they obeyed you in many other things, you would have found much, much, much difficulties. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, amongst you, the Prophet if he obeyed you in many issues, you'll have found much difficulty. And what's the next ayah after that? وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ But rather, Allah Ta'ala made Iman beloved to you. What's the connection here between وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَكَرَّهِ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَكَرَّهِ إِلَيْكُمُ الْكُفْرَ وَالْفُسُوقَ وَالْعِسْيَانِ What's the connection between Allah making Iman beloved to you and the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was amongst you, and if he obeyed you, you'll find much difficulty. What's the connection here? The connection here is this. That those things that they will have found difficulties in, and the Prophet ﷺ told them not to do, did they want to do it? They wanted to do it. But they didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? Because they obeyed the Prophet ﷺ. And because they obeyed the Prophet ﷺ, Allah made Iman beloved to you. So one sign of a person's iman, and a person loves iman, even when he wants to do something, he heard, this is how the Prophet said it should be done, what does he do? He obeys. 
Even if he doesn't go with his understanding, his mind, the Prophet ﷺ ordered this, I'm going to do this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me as an ordinary person that wherever is above me, I have to be obedient to him so long as don't order me with disobedience of Allah, I'm going to do it. This is a sign of what? Of Iman. So Allah made Iman beloved to them. So even though they wanted to do those things, the fact they knew the Prophet said the opposite, they did the opposite. And this is what the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, that whatever the Prophet ordered, even if they desired the opposite of it, they'll go towards it. For Allah Ta'ala habbaba ilaykum al-Iman wa karraha ilaykum al-Kufra wal-Fusuqa wal And Allah made hated to you disbelief, al-Fusuq, evil living, wal-Isyan, and disobedience. And Kufr, opposite of it is what? Iman. And Fusuq, the opposite of what is, is what? Istiqama, to be upright. Wal-Isyan, the opposite of, what? of it is what? Al-Kamal. And Allah mentions these things in the degrees of the worst of things, which is kufr, and then fusuq, and then isyan. Then after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that. What's, what follows that in the next ayah? After this, Allah mentions, rashidun. These are the people that have been rightly guided and upright in their religion. And the next ayah, fadlam min Allahi wa ni'mah. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention after this fadlan min Allah wa ni'ma? After saying, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ Allah has made iman beloved to you and made kufr, disbelief, evil living and disobedience, dislike to you. Why does Allah ta'ala mention the next ayah fadlan min Allah? Bounty from Allah and a blessing. Why? All of these things, Allah ta'ala made iman beloved to you. Made kufr dislike to you, fusuq dislike to you, and isyan disobedience to dislike to you. What are all these things attributed to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one that made iman beloved to you. He is the one that made you hate kufr, disbelief, and evil living, and disobedience. So Allah ta'ala said in the next ayah, fadlan min Allahi wa ni'mah. This is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we're guided here today by, by the grace, the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we've been guided to this deen. So when you see people that are not Muslim, don't think it's because of my deeds, my actions. I was born in Islam. La. The qawl of the people of Jannah, the people of paradise. What do they say when they see the Jannah? Alhamdulillah, ladhi hadana lihada. Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. Alladhi hadana lihada. That guided us to this. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِي We will never ever been guided لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ If Allah had not guided us to this. There are people that are brought up in Muslim families, in Muslim countries, strict environments, but yet they're not guided to the deen. And there's some people being American, England, in the belly, the deep belly of kufr and jahiliyyah, and they came to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَضْلَ min Allah. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you're gathered here today, being as a free society, there's some people not in the masjid, doing other things outside the masjid. Fadlan min Allah. This is a fadl from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when Allah sees in a person sincerity and seeking the truth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will guide that person. And when Allah sees in a person no sincerity, want to be guided, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا And when they became deviated, أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ Allah caused their hearts to become deviated and that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said if they turn away no when you're calling somebody turn away turn away turn away Allah ta'ala only wishes and you see about him to punish them for their sins so fadlan min Allah the fact we're all here alhamdulillah fadlan min Allah this is the greatest father you could have to be a Muslim Wallahi, nothing will convey to you the blessing of being a Muslim. Fadlan min Allah. Nothing will convey to you the blessing of having Muslim parents. It's very painful for us to lose our parents. Very painful, one of the most painful of things, to lose your mother or your father. But when you lose them, you know the sadaqah to jariyah. You know the sadaqah which is continuing for them, if you give sadaqah for them. That deed will continue for them. And one of the things that will continue for them a righteous child that calls or makes dua for their parents. 
Imagine you have a parent, a mother or father. You can't even make dua for them, and they've died. It's a sad situation. Fadla min Allah wa ni'mah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and it's a ni'mah. And it's a blessing. Wa ni'mah ni'matan. And blessings of two types. There's ni'mah al-'amah, general ni'mah, which the kuffar, the non-Muslim, the fasiq, they all enjoy the ni'mah of Allah azza wa jal. And there's ni'mah al-khas, a specific blessing. And the specific blessing is what? The blessing of the deen. So the non-Muslims, they have ni'mah, amah, the general blessing, the ni'mah of the dunya. And the Muslims, what do they have? What do they have? The ni'mah of the akhirah, of the hereafter, the ni'mah of the dunya, ya akhi. Barakallah feek. Many people have chose one of the two. <laughs> Many people said akhirah. No, they have both. No matter how poor he may be, no matter how much he may be sick no matter even if his barren has no children he still has ni'mah of the dunya and the akhirah because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those who believe and do righteous actions we're going to give them the best of lives there's no life and the sweetness of life like that of a believer and the ulama they say al-hayat at-tayyiba the good life you know what good life is they say what the believer has, the non-Muslim doesn't have is what? Al-Qana'a, contentment. The disbeliever, even if he's a billionaire, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a billionaire, to have that much money. They're never content. They're never happy. But the believer, Qana'a, he is content. The moment you're content, you're the happiest of people, person. Some people, they become every year, it's like a drug, you know, like a buzz, every year iPhone X, iPhone XS, they have to keep getting it to keep themselves happy. And there's some people, they use Rocky with Nokia 3310, and he's happy, the happiest of people. Why? Because he has Iman, he has Qana'a. So Hayat and Tayyiba, the believer, he has Qana'a. And more than that, why does the believer have the best of this dunya? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِمَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ جَنَّتَانِ The one that fears, stand before his Lord, he has how many Jannah? Two Jannah. Some of the ulama, some of the scholars like Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah azza wa jal, they say this is Jannah in dunya. Wa Jannah fil akhirah. How is it Jannah in dunya? They say, lahadat. Those moments which he feels an increase in iman and he tastes the sweetness of faith and he's with Allah azza wa jal, is as though he's in Jannah. And that's why the Salaf used to say, masakin ahlu dunya. The poorest of people, the people that are deeply engrossed in this dunya. Kharaju minha. They've left this dunya and they never tasted the sweetest thing in this dunya. And you say, وَمَا هِي is a ma'rifatullah to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing sweeter than that. Because the nature of every single person here, that's how people take on pets, to love and to be loved. And what is greater if you know Allah Azza wa Jal than loving Allah Azza wa Jal? What brings more sweetness? And that's why a person who knows Allah Azza wa Jal, like Ibn Qayyim mentioned that man arif Allah, whoever knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi asma'ihi wa sifati, with his names and attributes, ahabba Allah, he will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without a choice. So fadla min Allahi wa ni'mah, the believer has ni'mah of this dunya and the akhirah. And don't get it twisted when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, a dunya sijnun mu'min, that this dunya is the prison of the believer. Yes, it's a prison. Even if the believer is a billionaire, it's a prison. Why? Because he knows what ways in the akhirah is better than this. And this is the jannah of the kuffar. Because no matter what, how much suffering the kafir suffers in this dunya, even if he's the poorest of people, compared to what's waiting in the hereafter, this is his jannah. This is the jannah. Fadla min Allahi wa ni'mah. Allah Ta'ala said, it's a fadl from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala wa ni'mah. Wallahu alimun hakim. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is the all knowing he knows all things allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is hakim alim bikulli shay allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows all things wa ilmu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the knowledge of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bikulli shay in alim he knows each and every single thing as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa indahu mafatih al ghayb wa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the keys of the unseen la ya'lamuha illa hu no one knows them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ Allah knows every single thing upon the face of the earth and in the seas. To what extent? 
وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها سبحان الله. There's not a tree or a leaf that drops from a tree in any part of the world except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض. There's no grain in the deepest and the darkest part of the earth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ولا رطب ولا يابس and nothing that's moist or dried إلا في كتاب مبين except it's in a book record of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وحكمة الله and Allah ta'ala's wisdom حكمة بالغة. حكمة بالغة. So Allah Ta'ala end the ayah by saying, Wallahu alimun hakim. And then after this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ قَتَتَلُوا If two groups of the believers, they fight. Because sometimes these false rumors, these isha'at, these slanders, it may lead and it may cause a fight. How many wars have been caused because of false rumors? That if two groups of the believers, they fight. فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا I'm going to go into this tafsir, this ayah, next week. Do sulh, reconcile between the both of them. I'm going to go in, what does it mean, sulh? Sulh does not mean you get your right. For example, you say, are you 100? I say, are you 50? So a person comes between us and says, look, pay 75, go mid. Does that mean you've got your rights? No, does it mean I got my right? No, but this is sulh. Inshallah ta'ala, next week we'll go into this. Inshallah we'll stop here with this ayah. If there's any question, tafaddalu, inshallah. Any questions from brothers?